How does steel transform into one of the most critical components in modern military supply in just three days? At the Scranton Army Ammunition Plant, more than 11,000 of these 155 mm artillery shells roll off the line each month, a scale that shows just how massive and precise this operation needs to be. We're taking you inside the factory floor to break down the step-by-step -step engineering and industrial process behind making these shells. This video focuses on the tools, machines, and expertise needed for production, not their use in combat. It all starts with unassuming steel rods arriving at the plant. Let's see how the transformation begins. And if you're into detailed looks at real-world manufacturing, feel free to like the video and subscribe. There's more on the way. Steel rods arrive in massive bundles, each weighing over a ton, and it's here in the billet yard that the transformation really starts. Forklifts unload the rods and line them up for a first round of inspection. Checking for surface flaws and making sure the metal meets strict standards. This isn't just about stacking up raw material. Every rod is checked for consistency, because any flaw now could cause trouble later. Once a batch is cleared, the rods move on to the robotic saws. These machines are the backbone of the billet yard, slicing each rod into 14-inch billets. The saws work fast and their precision is key. Each billet must be exactly the right length. If you watch the process, you'll see the steel rods gliding along rollers, pausing just long enough for the saw to drop and slice through. In seconds, a long rod becomes several uniform billets each destined to become part of an artillery shell. Robotics make this step efficient and reliable. The saws are programmed to cut within a tolerance of just a few millimeters, and built-in sensors keep tabs on every movement. There's no room for error with thousands of billets to produce each month. This automation not only speeds things up, but also keeps the measurements consistent, which is critical for the next stages of manufacturing. After cutting, quality control steps in again. The billets are scanned using X-ray technology to check for internal flaws or inconsistencies that might have slipped through the first inspection. These scans give operators a look inside each billet, flagging anything that doesn't meet the factory standards. Any billet with a defect is set aside, ensuring only the best material moves forward. This tight quality control is what keeps the entire operation on track and prevents problems from cropping up further down the line. With billets cut and cleared, it's time to prepare them for shaping. The next stop is the furnace, where billets are loaded onto a conveyor and sent into a heating chamber. Here, the steel is brought to over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and held there for about an hour. This extreme heat softens the metal, making it malleable enough for the heavy-duty shaping that comes next. Seeing the billets emerge from the furnace glowing bright orange gives you a sense of the sheer energy involved in this process. The heated billets are now ready for the next big step. The transformation from plain steel to artillery shell is about to get a lot more dramatic. Next, these glowing billets head into the forge shop where hydraulic presses reshape them under extreme force. Inside the forge shop, the real transformation begins. Here, the air shimmers from the heat and the floor vibrates with the rhythm of heavy machinery. The billets, now glowing from their time in the furnace, are about as soft as heated Play-Doh, pliable but still tough. They move onto a conveyor and operators keep a close eye on the temperature, making sure nothing cools down too soon. That soft, glowing billet is about to become something much more precise. The heart of this process is the hydraulic press. One of the engineers describes it best. We're talking about thousands of pounds of pressure in a split second. The billet is set in place and the press slams down, forcing the steel into an initial cylindrical shape. There's nothing gentle about it, but the control is impressive. Each press is measured and sensors track the force and movement, making sure the steel stretches just enough without cracking or warping. Next comes the step that gives the shell its recognizable aerodynamic nose. Specially shaped molds grip the top of the shell and the press works again rounding the steel into a taper. This pointed tip isn't just for looks, it's engineered to reduce drag and help the shell fly farther and straighter. As the nose forms, a bank of sensors immediately checks the diameter, curvature, 
and even the weight of each shell. Any piece that doesn't hit the exact numbers is flagged and pulled aside, so only the best shells make it to the next phase. Throughout forging, the challenge is all about precision. At 2,000 degrees, the steel expands, so engineers have to calculate how much it will shrink as it cools. Shells are shaped a bit oversized on purpose, knowing they'll contract down to the perfect dimensions. The numbers matter. If a shell ends up even slightly off, it could affect everything from its fit in the gun to its flight path. Operators constantly adjust the machines, watching for any sign that a billet is cooling too fast or being pressed too hard. Once the shaping is done, the shells are moved to cooling racks. They still glow faintly, lined up in rows, slowly fading from orange to gray. This cooling step isn't just about waiting around, it's carefully controlled so the steel hardens evenly and doesn't develop internal stresses. Engineers monitor the process, making sure the temperature drops at the right rate. If you could watch a time lapse, you'd see the shells gradually lose their glow as they settle into their final form. As the shells cool, you can see their full shape, smooth, aerodynamic, and uniform. But the surface is still rough and the work is far from over. Every shell will face a new round of inspections and finishing steps before it's ready for action. Up next, we'll check out what it takes to turn these forged shells into flawless, battle-ready products. Quality control and finishing are where the difference between a raw shell and a reliable product is made clear. Once the forging is done, the shells go through a reheating process that prepares them for the next big step, tempering. Workers line up the still warm shells and send them into a massive 6,000 gallon oil bath. This rapid quench toughens the steel, making it strong enough to handle the shock and heat of firing. The oil bath isn't just about cooling. It's a precise step that locks in the steel's durability and helps prevent warping or cracking later on. Right after tempering, each shell goes to a lathing station. Here, machines trim away any excess metal and bring the shell to its exact final dimensions. This step is all about accuracy. The lathes shave the surface until every shell is uniform, setting the stage for the next phase. Once lathing is complete, the shells still show marks from the process, so it's on to polishing. Specialized machines grind down the surface, removing any last imperfections left by forging or lathing. This isn't just for looks. Even a tiny ridge or pit could mess with the shell's flight or cause stress points under pressure. The inspection phase is where things get even more strict. Both human inspectors and advanced machines work together, checking for flaws you can see and ones you can't. Inspectors use their eyes and hands to feel for rough spots or dents, while scanning equipment and laser tools measure every curve, groove, and edge. The smallest imperfection, even a tiny air bubble trapped inside the steel, is enough to have a shell rejected. This level of scrutiny means that a noticeable percentage of shells don't make it past inspection, but the stakes are too high to let anything slide. The focus here is always on safety and reliability. All this precision ensures each shell meets the spec to become a reliable component, not just a piece of metal, the process can feel unforgiving, after all, a lot of time and effort goes into each shell, but there's no room for compromise. Every shell that passes inspection is one that can be trusted in the field. With inspections complete, the shells head to the paint booth. Here, a protective coating is sprayed on, sealing the steel against corrosion and giving every shell a uniform finish. The paint isn't just for show. It helps the shell survive storage and transport, no matter the conditions. Watching the line, you'll see each shell get its final coat, then roll out with a matte sheen, ready for numbering and final handling. Before packaging, there's one last look over. Inspectors check the paint job, the smoothness of the finish, and the overall integrity of the shell. Any issues found now mean a shell goes back for rework or, if necessary, is scrapped. Only the best make it to the final packaging area, where they're stacked and prepped for shipment. Every step, from oil bath to final paint, is about delivering a shell that's not just precise, but dependable. And while their journey at this plant wraps up here, there's still one more crucial stage before these shells are truly complete.
From raw steel to a precision-engineered 155mm artillery shell in just three days, the scale and speed of this process reflect the growing urgency for advanced manufacturing. With the U.S. aiming for 85,000 shells a month by 2028, it's clear how critical this production is, especially when you consider that Ukraine can fire more than half the current monthly U.S. output in a single day. But the journey doesn't end here. These shells still need to be filled with TNT at a separate facility before they're ready for the field, highlighting just how interconnected and complex the entire supply chain is. If you found this peek behind the factory doors fascinating, hit subscribe and ring the bell for more deep dives into how everyday products and critical technologies are made.